Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, we will in a moment wade into the final... Uh, well, it won't be final, will it? But to the um, definitive description of Ian Duncan Smith's ludicrous universal credit proposals. There's a lot of you already a little bit upset with me for suggesting that I, I, I did think in the initial uh, conception of the programme it was well-meaning. Um, I may re withdraw that observation by the end of the hour. I'd like to talk to you about religion today as well. <laughs> there you go. There's, there's a sentence that ordinarily sees front doors slammed in people's faces. <laughs> I've got a few reasons, not least because... When we were broadcasting from Grenfell yesterday, um, I, I, I don't want to provide you with too much detail, but it has very oddly and, and sadly become a story that some of the vilest people in the country use as an opportunity to vent their spleen. And I, and I just wonder whether actually we do need a bit more Christianity in our country. Or a bit more religion in general. The, the idea that you could take against somebody who's home has burned to a cinder. Uh, you could write vile things about them on Facebook pages or um, use the opportunity of that lovely man who stopped his tube train on the bridge um, that we spoke to yesterday, Harvey. Uh, and astonishing responses um, on social media. And we don't get bogged down in them too often. And that will be very much a starting off point. I, I just wonder whether you think that this commoditization of bigotry and vileness has something to do with the decline of religion, or whether I am now sounding, not for the first time this week, like one of those reactionary middle-aged blokes who thinks everything was better in the good old days. When I say the good old days, I mostly mean the 2012 Olympics opening ceremony. I don't, I don't mean some mythical 1950s sort of fag packet fascist fetish. I, I, I just mean the 2012 Olympics opening ceremony. But we'll get on to that later in the programme. Um, the other story that I would draw your attention to, not reluctantly, that wouldn't be quite the right word, but with a, with a slight sense of um, uh, portent, is a report suggesting that we should challenge doctors more. Um, the NHS suggesting that we should uh, just, just uh, well, NHS patients, I beg your pardon, told by the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges and, and just ask more questions of our doctors. Now, I, there is a, I, I don't want to be rude or, or, or upset anyone, but there is an old adage in this game where if you want to prove that making the phones ring is not the point of this profession, then you could say something like, is there anybody old out there feeling poorly? And at this point, the phones would ring off the hook, but you would not necessarily hear anything remotely interesting for the next 17 hours. Uh, similarly, if I said to you, have you ever had a parking ticket that you thought was really unfair? Boom! The switchboard mails. Beth and Ava's uh, attempts to answer all the calls coming into the studio would be absurd. They'd be like, uh, they'd be like trying to bail out the Titanic with a thimble. The phones would go insane. And again... Nobody's got an interesting story to tell about parking tickets. It's just a, it's a nice way of us getting from A to B if there's not a lot in the news. Uh, I could also, of course, um, although it's never happened on this programme, I could also sort of politely invite you in a quasi-racist way to tell me to ring in and tell me why the reason your life has gone so badly is all because of immigrants. Um, but everyone else does that, so I, I, I like to leave the field clear. Instead, if we get on to that story, I will look at where the line is between... Um, challenging a doctor and being a pain in the proverbials. So, think on. Before all of that, okay, before all of that, let me draw your attention to the National Audit Office. The National Audit Office is, well, it's, it's pretty obvious what it does. It's the auditor of the government. It's the nation's auditor. It looks at cost benefits, it looks at performance, it looks at efficiency of things done by government and decides whether or not they are for good or for ill. It has been found to have failed to deliver the promised financial savings. You'll, you'll remember, and I'm going to go for this, all right? I'm going to go for this. If you want to get people to do things that are bad for them, usually the reason why people want you to do things that are bad for you is so that they can save some money, right? That ludicrous outfit, the Taxpayers Alliance, is, is currently campaigning to, 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 to cut the wages of teachers. They think teachers get paid. That's a, what a cracking little 
policy that must be. What do you do at work today, Dad? Yeah, I went after the teacher's son, flipping damn them, teaching our children, helping them broaden their horizons, increase their knowledge bases, looking after them in loco parentis. That's scumbags, a lot of them. So if, if you ever look at a story, and sometimes you need a couple of years, perspective on this, don't you? You, you, you look at a story and you realise whether you're talking about, about Brexit or whether you're talking about um, attacking teachers for earning too much, whatever it may be, the reasoning behind it, ultimately, when people have been successfully persuaded to punch themselves in the face, the reasoning behind it is usually that somebody somewhere who's very, very rich will get even richer as a result. Whether they're a newspaper owner, whether they are a fund manager who's, um, whose company is moving an office to Dublin so that it can take advantage of European Union passporting regulations while he continues to tell you that leaving the European Union is a really good idea, Jacob Rees-Mogg, or um, John Redwood, of course, advising investors to take their money out of Britain while telling you that leaving the European Union is a really good idea. Or Ian Duncan Smith still being wheeled out in studios up and down the country to tell you that leaving the European Union is a really good idea, while his last big project, the Universal Credit, is unveiled today as the mother of all governmental disasters. If you want to get somebody to vote against their own interests or to act against their own interests, the first thing you have to do is make them think that it won't affect them. Right, so leaving the European Union, it's just gonna, it's just gonna cause problems for for Romanian plasterers and metropolitan elites who won't be able to get au pairs. Right, it's not gonna cause problems for people that work for Rolls Royce in Derby. Four thousand six hundred of them found out yesterday they were going to be sacked. Derby, if I remember, voted about fifty-seven percent to leave, despite warnings in twenty sixteen from Rolls Royce <laughs> that, that that leaving could affect their ability to operate in this country. The first thing you've got to do is persuade people that what is going to hurt others is not going to hurt them. And that, I think, is how Universal Credit got off the ground. Because when I started working here, uh, single mothers were the subject of the two-minute hate. It was usually single mothers that were to blame for everything. I don't have children if you can't afford them. And uh, the idea that that was why a lot of people who listened to the program, a lot of decent, nice people who listened to the programme, felt that they didn't have enough money in their pocket after paying their taxes and going to work. And the reason for that was because of a 17-year-old girl who lived around the corner and, and, and had a kid and, and survived on benefits. I suspect that that penny kind of took a while to drop because there just weren't that many single mothers. And these were often the same people who argued against sex education, which would teach teenagers not to, A, have as much sex as they might otherwise have, and B, if they were to have sex, they should have contraception. So that weird right-wing pincer movement that, that said, down with sex education, oh, and if young women are not properly educated in matters sexual and end up getting pregnant, down with them too. And then, after a couple of years of working here, I noticed that the focus of the two-minute hate had moved to all unemployed people, all people on benefits. All right, it started with unemployed people. There's a crucial distinction here, because we noticed about six years ago that the majority of people signing on for housing benefit, the majority of new people signing on for housing benefit, actually had jobs. But that could never have happened unless you'd managed to demonise everybody that didn't have a job. So after single mothers, it became unemployed people. And you'll remember the two-minute hate would usually involve flat-screen televisions or somebody that you knew um, who uh, spent their day drinking tenant super and smoking skunk while watching both episodes of Neighbours and, uh, and, and Countdown and not, never going out to work and the curtains were never open. You got that feckless work shy layabout narrative. That's how universal credit happened. Because what they did was create this idea, and who would want to create the idea that this country was somehow um, being conned and mocked by its unemployed workers? Answer, people who pay tax, or people who try not to pay tax, but people who've got a hell of a lot more money than you or me will ever have, and often own newspapers. They needed us to get behind something that would potentially hurt us, because if you happen to lose your job, which you're quite likely to do in the current climate, if you happen to lose your job, as the 4,600 Rolls-Royce workers discovered yesterday, then you could end up on universal credit. And it's horrible. And it's a disaster. And it's possible that you supported it, because you thought it was just going to be the mythical single mother or the mythical work shy lay about with a flat screen television, you didn't realise it was going to be you. I was like that until my dad got laid off by the Daily Telegraph, went to the job centre, and when I told him I felt a bit embarrassed, he explained to me that, 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 that I shouldn't 
because he'd spent his entire life paying tax. And although, thankfully, with redundancy and, and, and what have you, the, the, the actual check, the unemployment benefit, was relatively negligible in the, in the context of his financial situation, the help that he could get in, 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 you know, he'd never written a CV since he was 15, that kind of thing. That's what he'd paid for. That's why you pay your taxes. It's, it's ours. The, na the National Health Service is ours. It belongs to us. The welfare state is yours. It belongs to you and me. And the people who've got the most money, historically, hate it. You can tell I've been reading Orwell again, can't you? And the reason that they hate it is because they've got enough money to look after themselves and they don't see why their money should go into a general pot from which people who can't afford to look after themselves can sometimes help themselves. So uh, the richer you are, the easier it would be for you to fund your medical treatment, whether it's something profoundly serious like cancer or something considerably less serious like piles. I've got enough money in the bank to have my piles excised by a surgeon. Why the hell should my taxes be going to help people who can't afford? It. And that is politics. That is 2,000 years of, of, of civilization. Just the tension between people who've got lots and lots of money and hate the idea that they should contribute. This is why Thatcher said there's no such thing as society, right? You can tell I'm working on the book this weekend, can't you? That's why she said it. Because why the hell should some billionaire who owns a newspaper and is domiciled in France for tax purposes, why the hell should his money go towards helping that road sweeper over there get treated for cancer? They hate it. That's why today the Taxpayers Alliance is going after teachers. Teachers? Why should I, as a very, very rich person who secretly funds this think tank that nobody knows the financial roots of, why the hell should I be paying for teachers to teach the children of peasants like the ones listening to this awful radio programme now? That's how it works. I do apologise. I had no idea that that was going to come out rushing up the old vocal cords this morning, but it, it does seem to me sometimes that the statements that are the bleeding obvious are the ones that get most routinely ignored. It means I have to reset completely on the conversation I was hoping to have with regard to the phones, and that is this. Just talk me through your universal credit experience, because something I've discovered over the last two or three years, very simply, is poverty. I, I, I live an incredibly gilded existence compared to a lot of the country, but the two things that hit me were when we discovered that half of the country would struggle to find a hundred quid in savings. Like, to just be clear on a hundred quid. To have a hundred quid to reach for. That made me feel utterly, utterly stupid. Sitting here, banging a drum, sticking up for social justice, casting yourself as some sort of champion of equality, and being stunned to my very core that that level of poverty was so widespread. Okay? If, as this report from the National Audit Office suggests, 40% of universal credit claimants, 40% of them have a 12-week wait before they get any money, then you have to ask yourself, what would happen if you had nothing for 12 weeks? Look at your life now, right? And you had nothing, nothing coming in for 12 weeks, and you were starting from a position of having next to nothing in the first place. What would happen? That's what Ian Duncan Smith has done to this country and he still goes to church on Sundays. The first thing you do is create a, a febrile atmosphere of persecution and hatred. You do it by using newspapers to conjure up images of unemployed people living a higher quality of life than employed people. You, you, you hear it on a phone-in show like this. Uh, my wife's cousin's window cleaner's cat's original owner. Oh, he goes to Ibiza every weekend while well, he's apparently unemployed. And then people like me say, well, if it's such a life of Riley on benefits, why don't you give up work and go and sign on? And then, of course, you get the the old silence. Some people are disincentivized from finding work by the benefits system, but that's largely because cost of living's gone through the roof, and mostly that will be down to rents. So Universal Credit pulled it all together, coupled with the bedroom tax. You remember the way they got that through as well? I had mean, people were killing themselves at one point over that. And, and once you've got that atmosphere in place, once you've got a significant swathe of the population chomping at the bit, then you can bring in legislation designed to attack these largely mythical sponges. Once you've brought in the legislation that's designed to attack these largely mythical sponges, people that aren't sponges start getting hurt. But by then it's already been done and it's too late to call a halt. Sounds rather like Brexit. So how has universal credit affected your life? And I should, I suppose, invite you to ring in and tell me that you've had a positive experience, because if 40% of new claimants are waiting 12 weeks to get a single penny, then maybe the other 60% have actually had their lives improved in some measurable and meaningful way. Although I don't think the National Audit Office managed to find many of them. Do you know how much it's cost? 
well over a billion quid, eight years of development, digital only approach to transforming wealth, welfare is still not working and is still in many areas a manual process so it isn't even digital. The head of the National Audit Office said we think the larger claims for universal credit such as boosted employment are unlikely to be demonstrable at any point in future nor for that matter will value for money. But if you are a lazy producer, desperately trying to uphold the idea that Brexit is still a good idea, the architect of Universal Credit, Ian Duncan Smith, will be coming soon to a programme near you. Linda's in Huddersfield. Linda, what can you tell us about this disgusting policy that many people predicted would end up precisely where it's ended up? I am, I, uh, I'm on benefits myself. Mm. I help out once a week. Um, a couple of us from a union, um, a union for benefit claimants, we stand outside the job centre and support people who are coming out. Right. Um, and, and this is a new universal credit area. It came in in November. Ah. Food bank use has gone up here by... It ca well, it, this was a couple of months ago. Local food bank use had gone up by 11% since November. So and and November would, wouldn't exactly have been the land of milk and honey either, would it? So what, what we're describing no, is no, 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 the, the, the people who are not getting any money at all after being put onto universal credit, in many cases for up to 12 weeks, they have to get their food from somewhere. They have to eat. Yeah. The, 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 one, one, one person I was speaking to, he was physically, you could see he was ill. Yes. You could see, you know, you could see he was unwell. And it actually turned out he was a carer for his partner who was even iller. Right. And he had to take time out of looking after her to go to the job centre, which he has to do, I don't know, once a weekly or two weekly or something. You know, and he's limping away and, you know... Obvious, in obvious discomfort, and had been sanctioned at the same time for not doing hard enough to find work, for not trying hard enough to find work. Mm. And you just hear, it, it's James, it's a stream of people, and we're not. Uh, there's there's one blogger in Manchester that does the same thing, Charlotte Hughes. I will mention it. It's called oh, the Poor Side of Life. You just did. And she writes a few lines on the story she's hearing. You know, nothing specific or anything like that. And it's torture. It's awful. Absolutely awful. You, people are coming out absolutely desperate. Give me a bit of details. Um, Give me a case study. Tell me what happens. You get, you get. What, how, so you're, 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 you're signing on, or, and or you're on housing benefit. You might be receiving child benefit as well. And then they try to put it all under one package. So they stop everything, put you on universal credit, and, and then what? Do you know? Do you know what happens next? Well, because I don't. I've got to be honest, I'm, and I, I, I need facing, to. Must, I am facing it myself, and until recently, I was volunteering at Citizens Advice. Right. But I'm being reassessed for the original benefits now, and right. I, you know, and I'm really ill. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm being reassessed, and that's you know that's scary. That you know it is awful, and I could face losing everything. And what they'll do is they'll just. What's happened to me before is they cut my benefits and then I'll receive a letter about it the day after. They cut, you know, my payment just doesn't arrive, so it right. could be a failed direct debit or something. Yes. Um, and then I find out that I've lost it. And then it's up to me to be strong enough to fight it, even if I... You know, and, and that's if I'm aware that I even can fight it. A lot of people aren't. Or they're too, you know, they're too weighed down or too overwhelmed by the whole thing. And, and, and account, by, account the by the bureaucracy. But, but, but is it, I mean, how but, presumably I can put in for an emergency payment. So imagine it's me. You can, but the and, rates of paying it back are enormous, James. No, enormous. Not. Really? Like, what, an APR yeah, on an emergency benefits payment? It's, it's not, no, it's not, um, it's not interest. It's right. the, the, the amount of repayments. So if you're getting a pittance anyway... You're oh, I see, the, the amount they take on. out of my money once I start getting what I'm entitled yeah, to. it's like 250 a month or something like that. It's, it, which, you know, doesn't... Set, for most of my life, that wasn't much at all. That was mm. a meal, <laughs> you know, but I yeah, know what it's doing. No, it um, changes you, around. You know, like Is there any way... And, and I do want... I'm hoping you will answer this in the affirmative because yeah. I, I do want a little bit of um, difference and diversity in, in our contributions. It, 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 can you see how it was well-intentioned, this policy? The idea that you bring six working-age benefits into one monthly payment would, would both simplify and oh. incentivise claimants to enter yeah. work? Uh, 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 well, I'm not sure about the incentivise. It's more about whipping anyway. But, um, but certainly the system is an absolute nightmare. So you, you know, don't, you don't think whipping. in any way in its... Because Dunkers Donuts used to write that. But didn't he do the thing about Easter House? 
said he went to Glasgow and met, when he was Tory leader and met some poor people and, and had a kind of amazing <laughs> road to Damascus conversion and came up with this wonderful yeah, idea like. to improve their lives. And, and you know, I, I, I think he's a lying charlatan, but I would quite like some evidence that he might not be. If, if I get well enough, if, you know, if I am strong, strong enough in the future, I actually want to be the chief exec of the DWP. Well, we all need ambitions. <laughs> I wish you well. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mocking you. I'm, I'm just sort of saying I think there's quite a long ladder to climb before you get to the top of, to, before you get up there. I don't know, actually. I don't know. Well, okay, thanks, I, I hope you do feel better soon, Linda. I really do. 27 after 10. Abs is in Hackney. Abs, what's going on? How's it going, man? Yeah, I'm good. What, what happened to you? Uh, well, I was on universal credit. I had to wait five weeks. I mean, I know you were saying 12. Some people have been waiting 12 weeks. But, I mean, even five weeks is quite hard to live without money or any food or anything like that. But, you, you know, a lot of people listening, and I, and I may ever so slightly be part of the constituency I described, they, they will struggle with the... they struggle to believe that you actually had nothing. Right. But that I is mean, what happened. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm not in a third world country. I have friends and family that can help out. But even then, it's quite embarrassing because I'm a 33-year-old man. Yes. And I'm unable to actually feed myself. Do you know what I mean? And also, what I want to say is that um, when you are on universal credit, what they do is that they put air, all the money that you're entitled to in terms of benefit yeah. into your account. So for for me, it was fine. I was able to pay my rent yes. and not spend it on alcohol or, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But there are people out there that are on these benefits. The worst thing you could do is put a big chunk of money in their account. Credit. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll, they'll, they'll spend that money on their drugs or their alcohol, or whatever, and not pay for their rent. And that puts them in a position where they will find themselves in um, housing arrears, um, rent arrears, I mean, stuff like that. And that's the way, this, this is their way of getting people out of this, out of this sea, you see. Oh, that's what I believe. Get, getting them out of what? I mean, get them out of... Um, you know, make sure that they they they've accumulated loads of rent arrears. So then, obviously, they won't be able to pay their rent. So they'll be kicked out by the council. So, well, the Citizens Advice Bureau has warned that um, it's driving people into long-term debt. The uh, yeah. universal credit. So d during that five weeks, theoretically, if you'd had an unfriendly landlord, you could have been you could have lost your home. Could you? Yeah. Yeah. You, if you didn't have friends who were prepared to help you, you would have gone genuinely hungry, which is why food yeah. bank use has gone through the roof. And I, I, I'm, I'm not one for blaming foot soldiers for the sins of generals. I mean, this clearly goes right back to the feet of Ian Duncan Smith. But but if you worked for the DDO, if you worked at the ground level, and you were hearing stories like this, you, you there's nothing. If I was your caseworker or, or I, there's nothing I can do, is there? When you say to me... I mean, the thing is, with my caseworker at the time, they didn't care. Well, I don't... They, they, I genuinely didn't care. Yeah. I've been on um, uh, Job Seekers Allowance and Universal Credit about three times in my life. Yes. And not Between once jobs. they ever found me... Yeah. Uh, any jobs. I've always found jobs myself. Yeah. They're, they're actually meant to help out with travel expenses, which they didn't help out with whatsoever. I actually questioned my um, my advisor a few weeks ago, you know, why didn't you help me out? Yeah. You know, I need to get to interviews, but you didn't give me this... This, this bit of money that would help. Do you think... Do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest a phrase that describes the world in which you lived when you were put onto universal credit. And I, I wonder whether you would agree that they seem to have been determined to create a hostile environment for people like you. Well, yeah, I, I believe that, um, you know, government, they want to get certain people out of the sea. They only want the rich here. And, and to be honest, I, li I live in Hackney, I live in Dawson, and I've lived there most of my life, and I've seen it from the worst to the best. And to be honest, I preferred it when it was a bit rough 
because <laughs> now everything is is going is skyrocketing. Well, I was in, I was down at Grenfell like yesterday, and like being kicked out. Yeah, people that have lived in Hackney all their life, have friends with family there, have uh, been kicked out to like Wales. The, de the Wales. deportation of the poor. Um, a phrase that, that that we first uttered on this program about ten years ago, and felt a bit embarrassed afterwards because it sounded so over the top. It doesn't sound over the top now. The Department for Work and Pensions, the former. Um, Territory, of course, Ovi and Dunkin' Donuts. They have insisted that the system of universal credit was operating effectively and was an improvement on old style benefits. It said the National Audit Office was incorrect to conclude its benefits could never be demonstrated. Uh, a spokesman said previous administrations poured billions into an outdated system with a complex myriad of benefits which locked some people into cycles of welfare dependency. We are building a benefit system fit for the 21st century, providing flexible, person-centred support with evidence showing universal credit claimants getting into work faster and staying in longer. The National Audit Office, which of course isn't seeking votes or, or support or fear or favour, has concluded that £2 billion has been spent on creating and running a system which is now six years behind schedule. Six years. And Incorrigible FCA reminds us that in May of 2017, Ian Duncan Smith was quoted as saying, um, get it verbatim, Universal Credit is rolling out brilliantly. It will have a dramatic and positive effect on people's lives. So I suppose I have to ask you at this point, because you'd be cross with me if I didn't. Would you buy Brexit from that man? Too late, isn't it? Um, however, by dint of getting a bit political this morning. I, I kind of drifted a bit away from the original question. There's only 850,000 people in the country have been put on this and I frankly want as many of you as possible to ring me now on 03456060973 and simply tell me and I'll take second hand testimony as well but I want you to simply tell me what happened. Because they claim, the, the, the government claim or the DWP claim today that 84% of people on it are happy with it. 83% satisfied with the service. Uh, satisfied is an interesting one, isn't it? I wonder how many boxes there were to tick on that particular question. And the majority agree that it financially motivates them to work. So, uh, look, if you, if, if, if you can uh, sit on the other end of the seesaw, you'll be doubly welcome today. So they put you on it. You're in the 850,000. I'm not doing this because I'm, I'm duty-bound to be balanced or anything like that. I'm doing it because I really, really hope it's not as bad as it looks. And, and the only people that can help us um, arrive at the conclusion that it's not as bad as it looks are the people who are on it and aren't suffering and don't recognise the description of having to wait five weeks like abs in Hackney or 12 weeks like 40% of new claimants to get a single penny from the system into which most of you will have been paying for all of your working life. 10.39 is the time. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Dan is in Borehamwood. Dan, sorry to keep you. What would you like to say? Hi, James. Uh, we spoke uh, a few months ago uh, at the end of last year uh, because I had a tenant in a property that uh, had had no payment for, at that time, nearly nine months. I remember uh, this. You were, you, you were. I, I presume I described you at the time as a friendly landlord or a benign landlord, a, 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 a good, a good man. I take that. Yes. <laughs> I, do you know Beth just Thank Beth just dug this out actually because I remember talking to you. She remembers talking to you, and I think we clipped it and, and put it out online. So, do you mind if I just play a little clip from then, and then you can bring us up to date with developments? Please do. Okay. Thank so, you. so this was when back in November of last year. Around that time, yeah. Okay, so this is Dan in Borenwood speaking to us last year. One of our tenants is that this chap was not, has not had any payments since April. And when I phoned up, they couldn't give any further information. They wouldn't allow me to uh, uh, assist in that way. Uh, he's living in our property, and that's fine, okay? Yeah. He hasn't paid anything. So we're sat there going, okay, fine, he'll be paid, he'll be paid. Um, they don't give any information. I've written to Mr. Gork uh, and had a response. Uh, it, it, they're basically telling me that everything's fine and it's no problem. But here's the problem. Um, it's creating a massive antisocial behaviour. We've got, one, we've got tenants who are... Uh, uh, they've got no money. They go out and they're begging now for food and money. Uh, they're being picked up by the police uh, because they're uh, uh, causing trouble and becoming a nuisance, being taken back to the flat. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's even more problems at the properties there. Uh, we've got one who has now, I believe, he's got severe mental health problems from not having no money and yeah. from the uh, 
DWP not paying anything or universal credit. There are people at their wit end, OK? Do you yeah. understand what is happening, Dan? Because I, I, I kind of... It, it, it's so upsetting. Go on. It's so upsetting. Well, you sound, you sound pretty upset yourself, actually. I'm really upset because yes. uh, this chap was a really decent tenant and has been for a couple of years. He's been absolutely fine. Uh, unfortunately, he lost his job and he was hospitalised, and we understand things happen like that. And but we're back in 2018 now and so Dan that, that I remember now you, you were describing some of your tenants who who've been put on universal credit and had this hiatus where there was no money coming in and that was a fairly detailed description of of, of the ripple effect of, of the impact upon their lives and 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 broader society have, have things got better I wish they had um, uh, some other tenants had uh, have received some payments not in full um, and uh, unfortunately, the chap that I uh, uh, previously spoke about, uh, uh, he killed himself in our apartment there. Um, I, uh, these were, uh, the worst was that about two weeks after, there was a payment made to, uh, oh, to him. Um, uh, the problem that I have with, with this is that uh, there are worse count. There are some councils that are worse than others. I would say that uh, the, the places that I was talking about previously mm. uh, were up in the northeast of England, where there aren't any jobs at the moment. There are, there, there's so little work. So a lot of the properties up there uh, and the and the tenants up there, they don't they don't even have a deposit of a couple of hundred pounds uh, to put in. There, there's nothing. So we are supporting a lot of our tenants at the moment, and this is uh, it, it's part of the course all round. Um, there are, as I said, areas that are better than others and worse than others in that way. Uh, some councils deal with it more efficiently than others, yes. but it's not a uniform system. It's not something that, that runs correctly uh, throughout all the boroughs in that way. And therein lies the biggest problem at the moment, is that... Uh, uh, I, I it's, a lot, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an underused phrase, and I feel a little uncomfortable using it in the, in, in the context of what you've just told us about that poor soul. Mm. But it, it's, I a po it's a, I mean, it's a postcode lottery under which all, all that gets decided is just how much you lose. Correct. Um, and not only that, but I think that the impact for, uh, for people running businesses or uh, individual landlords who are running uh, just one or two properties in that way, we're a, a slightly larger company. I remember. So, uh, there, there are, and, and we deal with, with properties over the, throughout the country, so uh, there are times where we notice the difference in areas and we can see what's happening uh, uh, just through dint of, of uh, uh, people not having payments. I would say the North East has definitely been the worst at the moment uh, because we do have other properties under the, under the company in yes. uh, the south of England and we find that they're a little bit more efficient. They're getting but through it, they're getting it through it quicker. I, I, I just, just, and I know it won't be easy for you, but to t take you back to the, to the fellow you were talking sure. to us about who, who, who is no longer with us, can you put a date on how, how long he went without any payment in, in, in the final If amount? I remember correctly, uh, I think that he was put on, it, it, it changed over in April 2017. Yes. Uh, he didn't have any payments. I think I made that call to you in uh, mid-November, yeah. and I think there was a payment uh, in the first week or second week of December to him. Uh, uh, and how, and, and I, I don't want to... I mean, it, it, it's perfectly possible that, that he would have... he would have ended up in, in such an awful place, even if he'd received payments, but you, you clearly... Here's the thing. Go on. Yeah, no, I agree. I right. do agree. But here's the thing. He was known to the uh, local authorities. Uh, he was getting... His uh, mental health issues became worse due to the fact that uh, yeah, uh, couldn't afford to do anything. It, it's a spiral uh, that, that, uh, that starts at the bottom with, with one person and affects so many other people there on in. Okay. In your in your in your in your heart of hearts, can you can you dredge up any sense that it was introduced in complete ignorance that it would do this sort of thing? Because the people implementing it are not the people who came up with it. You're you're asking them to essentially get get a you know a quart into a pint pot or, or whatever figure of speech works best. But but is there any way? Because Duncan Smith gave this ludicrous, disgusting kind of enconium after going to the East House estate in uh, in Glasgow. It, 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 in your heart of hearts, can you can you 
can you give him at least the idea that it was originally well-intentioned? Listen, I'm sure that that every politician is well-intentioned in that way. Are you? Because I, I, I used to be, and I'm changing. I look at Jacob Rees-Mogg and I, don't, I just don't know if they are anymore. I have to, I have to uh, take the view, I believe, that, that people are out there for the better and to make change. However, change doesn't necessarily mean that it's just because they're suddenly in power and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is going to be better than the last system. The previous system, albeit wasn't brilliant, uh, uh, was not yeah. as bad as this. But I think that the intention must have been good, but the implementation has been horrendous. And therein lies the problem, is that nobody's doing anything speedily enough. Nobody really cares about anybody. That's the really sad thing, is that there's... uh, 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 Everybody looks at uh, uh, one another and says, well, it doesn't matter, they... uh, uh, they don't have any money. We'll give them money when, when we're ready to in that way. But actually, they need something that day. They need to be able to pay yeah. for, for, for the basics, the bare essentials. I'm talking these, these people haven't got the money to buy uh, your basic toiletries and your basic food and pay for uh, your, your utility bills, and that's it. And therein, I mean, there, therein lies the definition of why their voices won't be heard, because they're the weakest voices in the country. Correct. And uh, uh, it's not until we all hop up and down and start uh, going mad about it all. And but we won't, will we? Or well, you will and well, I will. We do. But, well, yes. I do. I know you, you do. do and I do, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because, oh, look, that bloke over there's got a flat screen television set and I know an unemployed fellow who goes to Ibiza four times a year. Yeah, and do you They've know swallowed what, it wholesale uh, now, Dan. It's gone. The ship it, it, has sailed. It's nonsense. It's well, you know that, nonsense. and I know that, but there'll be hundreds of thousands of people listening to this programme who are still clinging to the idea that when your tenant ended up doing what he did in such tragic and, and heartbreaking circumstances, it, it, it was somehow his fault. In fact, stick it on the LBC Facebook page, and they'll be queuing up to crow and laugh without realising that ten years from now, it could be their kids. He's looking at a great piece in the New Statesman by Helen Lewis. There's two great pieces she's written, actually. She's written a great piece about what life was like on the Daily Mail and um, also a piece about universal credit and um, reminding us, do you know what Ian Duncan Smith's explanation was for why it was a disaster or why it wasn't going well or as well as it could? So on one, one hand, he'd claim it was all going brilliantly and on the other hand, he'd claim, well, if it isn't going brilliantly, you're not going to... Re- you, you, seriously, Ian Duncan Donuts, universal credit... People implementing it didn't believe in it enough. And he walked away from that and started trying to flog your Brexit. He's like Arthur Daly without the jokes or the charm or the warmth or the humanity. Actually, he's nothing like Arthur Daly, except that he'll sell you a car with no engine and pretend that it's somehow your fault for not believing in engines enough. There you go. That's it. In Duncan Smith's political career in a nutshell. Buy this car. All right. Thank you. Can I have the keys? Here you go. It doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, there's no engine in it. You've got to believe more in your car. It hasn't got an engine, mate. Yeah, but you've got to believe more. If you believe more in your car, it'll be going at 100 miles an hour with two minutes flat. Yeah, but it hasn't... It, it's literally not got an engine in it. You sold it to me without letting me look under the bonnet. You told me that it had a V8. Be careful, James, using uh, automotive language that you never understand. But you told me it had a turbocharged V8. Yeah, but it's your fault. If you, if you don't look under the bonnet and believe that it's got an amazing engine, you'll be lapping Lewis Hamilton by tea time. That's what's happened with universal credit. The people implementing it didn't believe it in enough. That's what's happening with Brexit. The people implementing it didn't believe it in enough. And the people who flogged it to you, they're, they're long gone, mate. They're way over the hills. They'll be laughing all the way from Dublin at you. 10.53 is the time. Dean is in Sheffield. Dean, what would you like to say? Hi. Uh, Hello, I Dean. suffer with a mental, mental health condition. I suffer from depression. I'm sorry to hear and that. I'm, and uh, I'm on medication, and uh, uh, the doctor signs me off, gives me uh, not fit for work notes to hand into universal credit yes. every month. Right. And uh, on the condition is that I have to see an advisor there, work advisor. But when you go in there to see an advisor, you sort of intimidated. You, you get threatened with sanctions. You get blamed for being ill. And, and, and how, how do you mean? How do you mean blamed for being? You, you know, this is going to be a very friendly conversation, Dean. So, yeah. if, if you don't like a question or I phrase it badly, just just tell me that you're not comfortable with it. And well, um, you get you get blamed for your depression. They say, "Don't you want to get better?" <laughs> and, uh, and and do they have any medical qualifications? These people? No. 
and you've got a security guard stuck behind your chair, a security guard at the side of your chair, and you're getting threatened with sanctions left, right and centre. You get you to sign up the claimant agreement, which um, you, you really can't do, you know. And the and, depression often goes hand in hand with anxiety, of yeah. course. Yeah, which and is... you signed off not fit for work from your doctor. Yeah. You know. So they're almost then... trying to get you to contradict your own doctor then? They're almost trying it to... Makes you, it makes your depression worse, James. I believe you, I, have, an, I, believe I have anxiety you. attacks even at the thought of going in there. And I've been sanctioned every month. I've been sanctioned. For what? For my depression, because I'm not well enough to go in there and have anxiety attacks. So, so you, you need to go in to give them the note from your doctor and no, expect... No, no, I've said that and that gets sent in, James. So then you need to go in to prove to them that you're not... I have to go in and see an advisor. But this is, so this is Kafka, you mate. find work when, you, when you're better. When you're better... And they, then you, you don't go in because of your illness and they take, yeah. they take the and money off you. you get sanctioned and you get all your money sanctioned, you have to put in a mandatory appeal. It takes 28 days for the mandatory appeal. Most of the sanctions get overturned on appeal, but it takes 28 days for that appeal to come, for them to do that decision. And, and that's 28 days during which you'll that's have no money? days with no money at all. What's the longest you've gone without any, any cash at all coming in? Uh, 12 weeks when, when, I, when they put me on to universal credit in the first place. How, 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 well, do you, how do you change sub- it from me? Go on. Change from the ESA to universal credit. Yeah. So people on the ESA are being put onto universal credit, and people with mental health conditions, with depression, things like that, are forced to go in and, and be intimidated by an advisor, blamed for their illness, signed up to ludicrous claiming agreements, which. Under, when you stop people from depression, James, it's uh, I know, I do know. Yeah. Really difficult to cope with things like that. I do understand that. And and what, what's and a claimant agreement? Can you just talk me through what that involves? Uh, it's 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 things like uh, you're doing brilliantly. You don't? have to go in and see things like a work psychologist. Yeah. Or you have to go. So it's almost as if they're trying to set up a, an alternative to the established health service. They're trying to set up their own system which Basically, will conclude yeah, that it's yeah. your fault you haven't got a job rather than the fault of your illness. Exactly. And, and it's just basically bullying you and intimidating you. And it's, it's making a lot of people feel this way. And a lot of people have committed suicide and I don't like to talk about things like that. No, well, let's not. We don't have to today. We've heard from no, Dan no, about his former no, tenant. I've heard a lot of stories online that... I'm sure you have. Yeah. It might sometimes, sometimes, time, unless those forums are actually giving you advice that can help you improve your situation, sometimes they're going to drag you down, aren't they? Even well, a little, a little... I've, I've, I've had to write to my MP, James, to get help with this. And have you had any help? At the moment, I, I've not had a payment since 25th of April. They've put on an open-ended sanction on me from February. I got the sanction in May. So that's like four months before the, before they applied this sanction. Uh, and, and this is open. because this is because you couldn't face the... It's because I was suffering anxiety attacks oh, no, and no, I no. couldn't go to a meeting. Which has been confirmed by your GP? Yes. Yes. I was not, I was not fit for work at the time. I had, you know, I know my GP. I know, I know, I know. I know. And... How, what do you live you on know, in the meantime? What do you, who helps you In the you meantime, out? I'm just living off noodles provided by a neighbour. I'm an emergency credit on the electric. I've got no gas. And, and I've got noodles off my neighbour, and I'm just having to survive, James. Um, I've got no family, because my mother died of cancer, I don't want to go into war. No, no, I know, mate, I know, I know. And, and it's just, it's just awful. And what does the light at the end of the tunnel look like, Dean? Getting, uh, I mean, you... I'd just like to be able not to face a month where I'm not having to appeal against a sanction. Which yeah, is why, which is why, and what, what does your GP say when you tell him or her what's been going on? Well, I'm on medication, James, and I've, I've had to increase the medication because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to deal with it all, to say the truth. It'd just be nice to be able to have the basic, the basic allowance paid a bit, of dignity, a bit of dignity, a bit of security. I'm shopping, not having to go to neighbours and beg for food and... There's no food banks around where I live, James, and, you know, when you've got no money to travel, it's... And you can't got no money, can't even afford a bus fare. Exactly. You've got no cash in your pocket. Exactly. Has, has, has the MP been any use to you? Uh, I haven't heard back from yet. They said that he's, he's going to investigate it. So I Who is it? Uh, Clive Pett. Right. Keep in touch, mate.
All right? Yeah, I will. And look, I'm after, look after yourself. I know it's a, it's a dark, dark yeah. mountain and you feel like you're at the bottom it's of it. It's a horrible place, James. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a horrible place. Bless you, mate. I mean, it's hard for people to get out of the depressive cycles when you're putting into a pressurised situation. And, and this, universal credit. this system is making absolutely everything worse for you. Exactly. Absolutely, every well, you got the story out there. There's a million thank more, you. million more people know what's going on now than they did before you. you found the courage to pick up the phone. I thank me, don't you thank me, mate? I thank you. I can't get these stories out there without your help, even if it is quite a heavy lift for you. God bless, Dean. I do a million stars.